What's up everybody and welcome back to the fourth episode of our F750 Crew Cab build series. Today's episode we finally get going on building a custom motor cradle for our 6.7 power stroke. After that we'll drop the motor and transmission in the F750 and hopefully by the end of this episode we have a successful transplant. So stay tuned. <laughs> All right, you guys, the mocking up has begun. This is our cardboard template for now. We're gonna cut this down from 12 inches to six. We don't need all this extra. We're gonna reinforce it so it's gonna be just as strong, um, but we're gonna cut back on width so that way it saves us some space in the engine bay of the F750. So next up is we are going to drill the holes for the mounting and we'll see how everything lays out and we'll get back to you. Update, attempt number one is on its way. We just got done making a template from the 2016. Here it is, we got all the angles, the way it needs to be. So right now, Kyle's getting a measurement of where exactly we need to have the motor in proximity to the firewall. And we got some spare cardboard over there so we can kind of figure out exactly where it needs to go and obviously roughly attach it to the frame rails so I will get working on that and give you an update shortly All right, you guys, we're finally getting ready on the motor mount. This is some scrap C-channel Kyle had laying around his shop. Um, he was just taking off all the excess metal we don't need with the torch. And the next step is I'm gonna grab the grinder and I'm gonna get all the imperfections off here, a nice clean slate for us to cut down and get going on transferring our template, which is right here, onto those two pieces. After that, we essentially have to cut them down, hopefully our bolt holes match up, and we can be on our way.
right guys, update time. Our 6-7 cradle is in there and it fits. So the next thing we have to do is we're actually going to box up the C-channel and reinforce everything to make sure it's just as strong as factory. Um, but obviously we wanted to test fit it first before we did any final welds. We had to make sure uh, none of the lines or wiring were pinched or punctured. So that was the main priority. Second priority was just to make sure it fit. So this one right here, it's up against the bracket um, or the, the cradle, but obviously it's moving freely, so nothing's being pinched. We have plenty of room uh, between the oil pan and the new cradle. This one was a little tough over here because this motor mount itself was just as wide as the C-channel. So we're going to come back through and brace everything up. We're going to pull it down and Kyle's going to finish out his welds there up underneath. But for our first attempt at this, we didn't have to rebuild it, nothing like that. I am more than pleased. <laughs> All right, update time. We got the truck back into the shop and we're in the process of getting the motor into place. Uh, we ran into a little snag with the firewall and the airlines. Uh, in order for us to push it back as far back as we need to, uh, we're gonna remove those. And Kyle said we could just put 90s on them to give us the space we need. So up next, Kyle's gonna remove all those lines. That way we have adequate space. And I'm gonna jump underneath and get the transmission um, ready to be mounted up to the motor. And so we can figure out the spacing and the mount for that as well. All right guys, new day here. Last night we got the motor and transmission in place and where we think it's gonna go. So then we pulled it back out and today we're gonna clean up the frame and tack in our cradle and get the motor back into place. And hopefully where we have it now, it'll sit and it'll stay and it'll work for what we need. So let's get to it. So Kyle just finished tacking this in place. Obviously it's not welded out or anything like that. We're gonna bring the motor back into it, set it in, and if it fits and if we like where it's sitting, then we'll pull the motor back out and finish our welds. Obviously we have a lot of uh, bracing to do as well. So we're gonna get going on that right now. <laughs> So the motor and the cradle fit in the truck. We did run into a slight snag. We thought our measurements were good to go with the distance from the firewall and where our mount started. However, the engine is too far forward. And once you place your intercoolers, your grill, all that stuff, um, we're too far forward. 
So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to pull the motor out, remove the cradle, and move it back. We have about an inch and, inch and a half to two inches to play with um, that we can move back to the firewall. And that should give us enough room to fit everything in front of the motor. We got the cradle moved back an inch and a half. We're about to drop the motor in. Hopefully this gives us enough clearance in the front and we don't have to tear it out again and try attempt number three. So wish us luck. Alrighty, this is motor's final resting place. We ate up the inch and a half to the firewall. And that's about as close as we can possibly get. And uh, that Kyle feels comfortable with getting. That should leave us enough room in the front. Uh, to my measurement, we have about seven inches that we need. And we're right there. Obviously this where the old radiator, radiator sports were. So it's gonna be very close. We haven't mounted up the transmission, which is under there. It's gonna be easier for us to potentially uh, create a new transmission tunnel than it is to move the motor front and back. Because the motor has to sit where it sits currently to make everything else work. All right, you guys, update time. New day here. Over the weekend, Kyle and his brother welded out the rest of this uh, mount for us with some reinforcement steel. We're not going to bolt it in place. It's going to be welded. So I know some of you guys with DOT questions um, are going to pretty much bring that up. Well, well, I'm never going to have enough gross weight for this truck, nor am I going to cross state lines. So it's going to be welded. It's strong enough. It's going to hold the power and the weight of the 6.7 motor. So it is what it is. Next thing up, we're going to bring the 6.7 motor back in, bolt it up and marry it to the transmission. And that way we can get the transmission in place, get a transmission mount mocked up and hopefully welded in place. Um, so there's nothing to it but to do it. So let's get after it. you guys update time we ran to a kind of a little snag we put the motor back into place uh, and moved it back an inch and a half but what that caused was getting the transmission to mount up was gonna be a little bit difficult because everything is so close to the firewall so Kyle's going to jack up the front of the motor and hopefully that'll give us adequate amount of space to essentially bring the transmission up at an angle to marry it to the motor and then we can kind of set it back down level. So we're gonna give that a shot. Hopefully it works.
All right, you guys, bad news. We're getting caught up on the firewall at the transmission, so we can't get it up and into the motor. We knew when we moved the motor mounts back an uh, inch and a half that it was gonna be close to the firewall. We still think we have enough room and that we'll have enough room when the motor and transmission set in place. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we're having an issue right now just getting the transmission into the proper place to mock up the transmission mounts. So we're actually gonna brainstorm a little bit to figure out if it's going to be better to cut into the firewall or if we will in fact have enough space by lifting up the cab, putting the transmission in, attaching it, and setting the cab back down onto the mounts. So we're gonna kind of figure that out, do some brainstorming, doing some tinkering, some thinking, and uh, that's pretty much the update for here. Hopefully it doesn't take us too long and set us back too much time, but we wanna do this properly, do it the right way, so that way going forward, we don't have to come back and fix mistakes or things that we kinda uh, half-assed and things like that. So we decided to pick up the cab. We think that'll give us enough space to marry the motor and transmission together, then we'll set the cab back down um, where we need it to be. Right now, Kyle is taking off the side mirrors so that way we can get the crane in the middle of the cab to lift it. I just got out all the motor mounts, so this thing is pretty much free from the frame. Uh, we're gonna get off this other passenger side mirror real quick, and then we will push into place and lift the whole thing up. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna slide it back towards the back of the truck and set it back down because we need this for other things. So we think that's the best game plan instead of cutting into the firewall. I guess we will figure out, time will tell if that is the best route, but we do think that that'll give us enough space to get the transmission pushed back forward and uh, we can go from there. So nothing to it but to do it. we got the cab pushed back. Kyle and I were talking, this probably should have been something we did at the very beginning of this project just because with the cab now out of the way, we have so much more room for everything, right? We can access the frame, we can access the airlines, we can access the transmission, the motor, everything. So this definitely should have been something that if you're gonna do in the future, take the cab, push it back, take it off the frame, and uh, you'll actually save a lot of time. This will also help clean up the firewall and uh, getting the work done on that that we need to have done. So going forward, we're essentially gonna be able to now marry the transmission and the motor. Uh, we actually cracked the oil pan. So we're actually going to pick the motor back up, replace that, set it back down, and then we can reattach the transmission. But this is also gonna let us have so much space for transmission mounts, and uh, going forward, we think it's gonna help save a lot of time. Um, it was kind of a pain in the butt, all this trial and error, and with the, especially without a lift kit in here, um, we kind of had to configure some things and jimmy rig it, but at the end of the day, I think this is probably the best choice, and uh, going forward, it's going to save us a lot of time. All right, you guys, that's going to be a wrap for today's episode. We didn't get everything done like we would like to. We didn't get the transmission and transmission mounts figured out. However, we did hit a huge milestone in this build series, which was getting the 6.7 motor in its final resting place for this truck. Um, we'd like to get everything done, however, life happens. We should have pulled the cab earlier. We should have done a lot of things differently, but there's not a lot of information on shoving a 6.7 power stroke in a dent side crew cab. So we're kind of learning as we go, which means sometimes it might take longer than we'd expect. Um, and we knew this stage of the project was gonna take the longest amount of time. And so that's why we're kind of going slow and easy just to make sure everything's right. We don't want to rush things and then in a year, year and a half, we have to redo everything because things weren't right, things weren't square, things weren't level. 
Yeah, we just want to do it right the very first time. And so, unfortunately, we didn't get to the transmission, but we are so stoked about where we're at with this build series. And going forward, we have a real clear path as to what we're going to do. And uh, this next episode, we're going to be able to accomplish a lot. So stay tuned. Yeah.